Oh, all right. Time to get out, Claude. Oh, well, that's... <laughs> so much mayhem with such a little clamshell device. Greetings, and welcome to an LGR thing about a thing while I work on other things in the background. I actually just got back from a trip and I've been getting a couple of other larger, more scripted videos going. So this is gonna be kind of an unscripted off the cuff thing. I just wanna talk about this thing today. <laughs> Look at this. This is the Canon LS100 TKM. Yeah, it looks a little bit like an old flip phone, but it's a mouse, it's a calculator, it's a numpad USB thing from Canon from 2008. Uh, sold only in Japan. And the reason I'm talking about it uh, at all, really, was because of this image that you might have seen floating around online if you're in certain old computery circles. Every couple of days towards the end of 2021, uh, like from like the early part of December onward, every couple of days I was getting that picture sent to me and being like, what the heck is this? And it just started floating around all kinds of other places. So I went and looked and I was able to find this one, new old stock on a Japanese auction site, ordered it, and it finally came while I was gone last week. So uh, yeah, let's just take a look at it. It's not exactly odd wear, even though it's very much odd. I just don't really know if there's enough to talk about to make it a full on odd wear retrospective. You know, it's not a obscure company. This is Canon. Let's unbox it and check it out. All right, so here is the packaging as it was sold in Japan. With just a little opening there to hook it onto a hook on a pegboard. It was sold uh, seemingly just all over the place. In fact, I found a photo uh, from like 15 years ago of somebody that had found one in a shop and they were just sold in different shops for different prices. This one was 3,300 some yen, so around 30 US dollars. This is one of those, and I've talked about it before, I think, where you had open price models going on. And so it was up to the retailer to determine the price, but yeah, around 30 bucks, which isn't terrible considering it is a computer mouse and a calculator and a numpad add-on all in one. You can get those things separately and, well, I mean, they might end up costing about the same depending on what you went with, but you know, Canon very much seemed to be pushing the whole space saving aspect of it. You know, not just saving some space on your desk if you're you know, using a, a laptop that doesn't have a numpad or a keyboard without one, you can have a calculator and a numpad and a mouse all in one spot, but also if you're traveling, so you don't have to take a few different devices. Otherwise, yeah, I mean, they sold other calculator combination devices that also happen to be a mouse. You know, they just have all the stuff, the buttons on top, like the LS100 TKM does, but they don't have the cool folding clamshell cell phone type of top with the LCD on those. And obviously they came in uh, both black and white. This is just the black one is the only one that I could find. Let's just go ahead and get this open here without tearing up this packaging. It does look like it should come apart okay. There we go, okay. <laughs> it really does have that cell phone kind of vibe. Oh, yeah, I also had this little area here where you could sort of press through and feel the buttons. I don't really know why. It's not like I had a demo mode in this store or anything that I know of. And we got some fold out documentation here. Uh, yeah, there's a little battery in there for the calculator portion to work separately just from the mouse. And uh, some, other, some other little things in here. I can't imagine it's too involved. Yeah, showing you how to use a calculator. The numlock stuff, I was reading about this as well. It seems to be that it is completely independent of the numlock that you might have in the system itself. So you could have like numlock on over here uh, but just the regular computers, you know, if you had that going on another keyboard, then it won't necessarily be on at the same time as that, which that's kind of cool. I guess it's all just, just set up stuff. Looks pretty darn standard. Okay, so the cable. A little, just a little mini USB. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's satisfying. <laughs> Oh, dude, for like flip phone folks, 
and mouse folks. Ooh, those feel pretty good. Yeah, honestly, for a mouse feel, not bad at all so far here. That does not click, but the scroll wheel scrolls, and it's got a bit of a yeah, slight indentations you can feel in there. Optical, of course. Use battery, CR 2032. Indeed. So that, okay, well that is screwed in place. So we'll see if that's still good. <laughs> it is still good. <laughs> Perfect. This is pretty neat, man. Got a couple of buttons here. I'll need to refer to documentation real quick to see what those do exactly. But yeah, you also have some of these other buttons on here that would be quite useful on a PC, you know, tab, backspace, presumably enter in the bottom right. Just like a numpad, if you have these on, you also have arrow keys, home page up, page down, end, insert, delete. That's a fun combination of things. And I suppose that it's just on if the battery is going, because it doesn't seem to be, I don't, I don't see any way to turn this off. So I guess it'll just turn off eventually. And of course you can also just use it like this. <laughs> Why not, right? In fact, I was reading about that as kind of the most intriguing thing about this. Like if you're doing a spreadsheet or just entering a bunch of things like where you need, you know, the mouse and you're mousing around, you click on something and then you can just type in here without moving your hand and then continue mousing. Yeah, this is pretty neat. So let's get this thing plugged in. There we go. Yeah. Get that going with a PC and do some calculating mousey things. Windows XP. Yeah, I got the Windows XP rig going here with the Canon calculator mouse plugged in and going, working just fine. Just had to plug it in and that was it. It was good to go. And yeah, mouse buttons, nice and responsive and clicky. They feel pretty good. They're a little bit physically small, but uh, not bad, you know, they're fine. Optical sensor, it is doing its thing, and the scroll wheel scrolls. Does not middle click, but it scrolls and feels pretty good. As a mouse, uh, good stuff so far. I also did want to briefly mention, I actually did try this first on a Windows 98 PC because I noticed on the back of the box it said, don't do that. <laughs> so I was just curious what it would do or not do. But you know, 95 with the supplement and 98, it have USB support, but it just gave an error when trying to do any of the other functions with the mouse. And it would recognize clicks, but it wouldn't actually move around. So yeah, it's just, they put that on the back of the box for a reason. So anyway, got Windows XP going here. We open a word pad. And so this is where things get interesting. So as it is now, it's just set to the regular calculator mode so we can calculate things. It's totally separate, but when you put it into PC mode uh, on the front or the, the little display there, you'll see that it's in PC mode with NumLock currently enabled and that and we can still use it as a normal mouse, of course, but it also lets us type in things. So <laughs> it's like we have a, a numpad plugged in, which obviously, you know, I don't over here. This is a IBM Model M SSK without a numpad. But yeah, we got backspace, we got tab. It's just all the keys that are on there, like it's a, a normal keyboard. And then if you turn numlock off, on the actual Canon itself here. Uh, it displays that Numlock is off right there. And now all these keys are the secondary functions. Or two. Okay, so for instance, we've got arrow keys, just like a numpad. And we've got home, end, page up, page down. Uh, tabbing once again, backspace, those still work. A lot of these others, yeah, you have some different characters now. This is pretty darn useful. And uh, 
Yeah, I don't know, a little more than I perhaps bargained for when just first looking at it in those photos. Of course, you don't get a full keyboard, but you know, there's a lot. And it's a lot of things that you would normally do with your right hand anyway over here if you had the numpad cluster. And of course, it also takes care of, you know, these things too. You can do all this plus the numpad stuff, and it's just right here. <laughs> I am starting to uh, really enjoy this. And yes, the numlock is completely separate since it's its own distinct USB device. So it doesn't affect whatever you've got going on with your regular keyboard. And then one other kind of party trick. So if we go out of the PC mode and uh, we go into calculations, so let me just type in something here, okay? And now if we were to press this left one beneath the left mouse button, it actually enters what is on the calculator side as text. How cool is that? <laughs> and now look at that. You know, they're not two distinct entities. I just thought it was like two, like a calculator and a mouse just crammed into one device and they don't really talk to each other. But they do, as long as it's in the right mode. Like, so cool. I can't even say why, but it is. I think that's pretty much it in terms of what the device itself can do, just kind of on its own. And then, you know, you're just left with a, with a mouse any other time of the day. And if you want more, well, there's more. It could use with a little thumb thingy here, a little opening. I mean, maybe you're not supposed to do it that way, but I like flipping out clamshells like that. It's just hard to get it in there, but once you do, it's quite satisfying. Anyway, let's play some games because since these are inputting just regular keyboard commands, I mean, that means we could do anything. Like GTA 3, yeah, why not? Can't imagine anybody has a has played Grand Theft Auto with a mouse numpad calculator thing from Japan, but we're about to. So yeah, as a mouse, you know it works exactly as you would think. It just sort of moves around. I got a keyboard over here. That's great. Mouse buttons do their thing. We can do violence. However, if we uh, yeah make sure the num lock is off, <laughs> now we got arrow keys. So, uh, yeah, moving left and right, forward, back. Dude, one-handed GTA is entirely possible. Glorious. Now, unfortunately, it does not let you press more than one key at a time on the cannon mouse itself. So there's no rollover. I would think it at least have like two key, but yeah, if I press, say, run, it just stops me dead in my tracks. Uh, or even forward and left, or forward and right, you know, more than two inputs at once. It just doesn't do anything. Um, but whatever, we can still murder pedestrians. Fantastic. GTA. Switch weapons. Oh, uh, brings a new meaning to the term hand cannon, because uh, I've got a, a cannon in my hand, and, and also a gun, because there's hand can. Okay, anyway. All right, all right, I'm getting out of here, don't worry. Just take this car. Oh, dang it, I can't accelerate and steer at the same time because of the key restriction. Oh dear, uh oh. Oh, come on now. Uh, what, what? Crap, I'm changing cameras. <laughs> oh, three stars. <laughs> Come on now. We can get away. Totally get away. Oh, all right. And I have not flipped. Okay, well, no, there's that. Time to get out, Claude. Oh, well, that's... <laughs> so much mayhem with such a little clamshell device. Now, you saw how that was. Like, you can't steer and accelerate and stuff like that if you have a, a car driving situation. But if we were to play a racing game that does let you steer with the mouse movements, like Midtown Madness 2, we should be able to get around that. So... Let's see how this goes. 
Get ready to take a cruise through San Francisco. Oh yeah, there we go. So just holding the eight key for accelerate, we've got two for reverse. <laughs> and just the mouse. Okay, well, don't do that. Oh yeah. Just a normal day in Midtown Madness too. San Francisco, it's always like this. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, it's not, not terribly different than just playing Midtown Madness 2 with uh, any mouse in the mouse mode. Normally it maps things, accelerate and brake to the mouse buttons. I just have it set to play with the numpad on the mouse because we can. <laughs> so whatever. Nothing, nothing too bonkers here. I, I just wanted to play Midtown Madness 2 again. Do I need an excuse? I don't think so. Okay, well... And of course, it wouldn't be a test of stupid input devices without some Duke 3D. Some DOS gaming in general. Why not, right? Come get some. Okay, so... I have a forward map there. Shooting right there. And I got jump to right mouse click, so we can do that. And of course, auto run is a thing in this, so... Come on, go forward. Oh no, I pressed the wrong. What did I do? I turned off PC mode by accident. There we go. Forward, dang it, forward. Oh. This tiny little numpad. Uh, that was actually one of the, <laughs> like the biggest complaints was how small the numpad actually is. I mean, it makes sense, it's crammed onto a back of a mouse, but yeah, like the Amazon Japan reviews, that was one of the top complaints, was that the numpad was almost too small to be useful for like Excel and, you know, whatever you actually use a numpad for, not Duke 3D. I have one health left. That's not okay. Uh. All right. Let's calculate how many body parts we have. Yeah, anyway, the other chief complaint seemed to be people saying that the that just the overall general cheapness of the device. The plastics are very flimsy and light, so I can feel... Uh, yeah, like maybe some of the, like the hinge, you know, for the clamshell, and like people were saying that the buttons died after like six months of heavy use. So, perhaps not the uh, most durable of devices, but... It is what it is. No, I can survive. Eh. <laughs> oh, that guy was totally lifting me up with his jetpack. There we go. Whatever, let's get out of here. Let's go in here. Die pigs. Get that crap out of here. Ah, uh, well, you know, go ahead and kill me. I'm tired of this. <laughs> kill me! Took your sweet time. <laughs> All right, well, I suppose uh, that is about it for the little cannon mouse numpad combination, all kinds of stuff in one thing from Japan. Thanks to everyone who sent in the links or the photos. You, people didn't really know where the original photos came from that were floating around at the end of last year, but uh, yeah, I was happy to be able to track one of these down because I really wanted to show it as soon as I could find it. And I'm just honestly more impressed with it than I thought I would be. Some of the functions are pretty darn neat, you know, just having all the different numpad stuff right there is, I could see that being genuinely useful as well as just being able to switch over into uh, out of PC mode and into the calculator mode. <laughs> I know I've been covering a lot of different weird mice and mouse devices. Uh, hopefully it hasn't been too much of it lately. I don't know, I just find these things really fascinating. Sometimes a bunch of them come all at once. So I hope that you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, yeah, check out other LGR things I've already done and more to come 
here pretty soon as I finish editing and putting things together for your viewing pleasure here in LGR. And as always, thanks for watching.